It's no secret that the California housing bubble has popped with hardships spread wide. Real estate expert Robert Kiyosaki predicted all of this would happen back in 2005, but most people didn't listen. It's the biggest financial bubble in the history of the world. So I have the, I have the benefit of traveling in the entire world. All markets go up, all markets come down. So the market will come back. But right now, it's going to be a sled ride down. It might be a down for a long time, simply because it's going to take more of a down payment because nobody trusts anybody anymore. And the next big sacred cow is your home is an asset. See, in 1997, I wrote in Rich Dad Poor Dad, your house is not an asset. And at that point, every realtor stopped sending me Christmas cards. <laughs> <laughs> because your home is not your asset. Your home is actually your bank's asset if you could read a financial statement. So, Kenny, you own lots of real estate. Yes. Is your home an asset? No, not my personal residence. A lot of people are in trouble today. Yeah, yeah, it houses. doesn't produce any revenue. It's, it's, right. You know, I, I pay the bank every month. It, it's the bank's asset. Yeah, and what everybody's to tell me, I want, my house has appreciated in value. Again, that's capital gains versus cash flow. And what the people are finding out now that the real estate market has crashed, and this is all over the world, the value of their home has been sucked out. And so now that somehow people are upside down because they're really finding out it's a liability because they still have to pay the bank on that mortgage. You know, so let's say they bought a house for 200,000, they still owe 180,000, but the house is only worth 100,000 now. And they're now finding out that your house is not an asset, it's a liability. And I'll tell you, I'm the largest originator of FHA and VA loans in the entire country out of everybody. I rent. What does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> but as an accountant, is a house an asset? Oh, no. You know, the bank considers it. You know, they'll say it's an asset, and the financial planners will say it, it's an asset. But the reality is, it, it's not an asset unless it's putting money in your pocket. And a house just drains money from your pocket. And, and the thing that I, one of the, my little pet peeves is that people say, well, if you own a house, though, you get a deduction yeah, for the interest. Whatever. Yes, but it's money out of your pocket. And the best you can get is 40 cents on the dollar. Okay, so you're given a dollar and you get 40 cents back. You're still out 60 cents. It's not difficult math. Your home is shelter. It's a place to raise a family. But it's not an asset that you're ever going to make money it's, it's on. It's not a financial asset. No, you might make money in an uptrending market, but today the market's trending down. And that's why in 1997, what I said in Rich Dad Poor Dad, your house is not an asset, was heresy. Now people are going, oh my God, I should have listened to it. So I'm not saying don't buy a house. I'm saying just don't be financially ignorant and call your house an asset if it's taking money out of your pocket. Because Kim and I own two houses, one here in Arizona and one beautiful beach house in Hawaii, and they're our biggest liabilities. People did think, especially in the high times, you know, in the, in the, when the markets were high, they did think their house was an asset. And people, even if they had their mortgage paid off, they were borrowing against their house and putting it into the stock market or wherever they were putting it. So not only were they getting crazy mortgages, but they were taking money out against their house and second, third mortgages. Well, and, and they were doing it for things like vacations ah, and yes. boats, <laughs> boats and cars and other things like this. And, and the reality is the reason they were doing that is because they got to deduct the interest off their taxes. Oh. And so they thought that, well, this is okay because I get a deduction. But uh, just because you get a deduction doesn't make it a good thing to do. Well, yeah, one of the trouble. big mistakes people make is over-improving their house. You know, <laughs> they put in a $50,000 swimming pool and it brings them $20,000 worth of value. Well, the way I look at it is you just bought a $30,000 babysitter. 50% of the mortgages in Reno are underwater, meaning that the mortgage is greater than the value of the property. All right, and this affects the whole community because people aren't able to sell their homes and move to a place where they can get a better job. The neighbors aren't going to sell their house because values are so far down. So this has affected entire communities. And again, we've, we've heard people say that your home is an asset. Well, we're talking here about financial education, and this is one of the biggest financial lessons that our country has had to learn a very hard way, that your home is not an asset. This has happened before, and, and what's going to happen is new laws will come in, new credit will be loosened again here in, in, year, years from now, and the prices will come up again, and people will do it again. It's about a 20-year cycle as in anything. The point here is this. This is the best time to be buying real estate. If you are a first-time home buyer, this is your best time. Just don't call it an asset. You know, this is the best time to getting back in the market. and. That's why it takes financial education. The reason I'm in real estate is for one reason, it's debt. 
is one of the easiest assets to get debt on is real estate. But if you're going to use debt, you've got to be highly financial and intelligent. Otherwise, if you're not intelligent, just keep calling your house an asset. We're talking a lot about assets, and there are four primary asset classes. One is business. As an entrepreneur, you own a business. Number two is real estate, and we love rental properties that cash flow, real estate that puts money in our pocket every single month. Number three are paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, savings. Most E's and S's are in paper assets today. And number four are commodities, gold, silver, precious metals, oil and gas. For Robert and I, we're in business. We're in real estate. We own hundreds of properties in real estate. We have paper assets and we have commodities. So for us, when we talk about diversification, we're in all four asset classes.